Hello students, so today we will be discussing about uh, sensor standards, I mean IEE standards, IEEE standards, IEEE uh, stands for Institute of, uh, Institute of Electrical and electronic engineers and uh, these uh, so this this uh, institute has specified some standards or some guidelines uh, to ensure that uh, there is accuracy reliability and uh, efficiency in sensor technology now why the the reason why these standards uh, were uh, required was due to the fact that uh, the sensor technology as is ever rising sensor technology is rising so what is the problem is that there are some original manufacturers of an equipment there are software developers and there are people which provide the end product or they provide the platform for a sensor to be in use. Now as these technologies are so rise it becomes a, an adoption burden to synchronize the ever changing sensor technologies so uh, that is the reason because uh, in sensor technology the most important thing is you need to connect one system with another one sensor type with another apart from updating the technology so to do that so to have a common methodology <laughs> have a, a common methodology have a common methodology uh, for the different innovations for the different uh, aspect of innovations and for specifying the sensor performance Some standards needs to be set uh, now this so there is an adoption burden but the other thing that must be taken that this standards take care is that they do it uh, they, they keep a standard but also they preserve the product they keep uh, the product differentiation and innovation the product differentiation and innovation these aspects have also need uh, needs also to be preserved okay so that is why this ie standards comes into the picture okay now uh, these ie standards they cover the various aspects uh, including the data communication performance evaluation and uh, integration into larger systems and they are uh, defined applications in healthcare internet of things robotics environmental modeling and industrial automation i mean those areas where sensors are very much active and there are uh, 1500 active standards till date and there are a few more which are under process now uh, 
so that is why we will focus on few of the most uh, relevant and common standards and we will focus on the different series for example uh, starting with this uh, i triple one four five one series uh, it is uh, an open network uh, communication interface it is an open network and in a different subdivisions like the first one is uh, for networked smart transducer the second one is for the digital interface and the next one is for um, the mixed mode that is analog and uh, digital mixed mode and the last one the it's the one for this one is for wireless communication and uh, this one is for radio frequency uh, identification sensors no no to give an example how uh, these sensors uh, they evolve over the time and how the standards standards have changed we need to look into uh, this another type of sensing that is uh, 802 sensing which is 802 standard which is mainly for wireless communication now uh, in 1997 uh, when wi-fi was first introduced uh, the standard SMEET was 802.11. This was a standard set, and in the standard, the frequency was 2.4 gigahertz of the wireless communication, and the speed was 2. Mbps megabytes per second and the range uh, was uh, 20 meters indoor and uh, 100 meters outdoors this was the standard set in 1997 and this is the number associated with the standard now in 2024 in uh, 2024 the standard is now called 802 over the years it has evolved 0.11 BE for wireless communication so it basically uh, this is for the seven generation wireless communication you might be using a five generation in our mobile devices but the seven generation has, has been already set and it will probably in the near future we will also see seven generation devices now in this case the frequency uh, has got yeah the 2.4 uh, 5 or 6 gigahertz and uh, the speed has uh, improved enorm enormously uh, so the speed is uh, earlier it was uh, around uh, 2 mbps now from 2 mbps in 1997 at the speed e for the seventh generation devices is 46.1 gigabytes per second so there's enormous change huge change in speed and the length of wireless how it's been also has got changed but not that much it's 20 30 meters indoors and 120 meters outdoors so this is how the so there has been chronological developments over the years and as the technology gets developed according to that the standard gets changed so this is one of the examples of uh... okay so there are other uh, standards also uh, like if you consider uh, an 80 uh, Two series uh, focusing more on the 802 series uh, 
देर इज अ सीरीज विच इज कॉल्ड एट जीरो टू एट जीरो टू पॉइंट वन फाइव ए दिस इज वन ऑफ द आई ट्रिपल ई सीरीज विच इज मेनली एसोसिएटेड विद लो पावर शॉर्ट रेंज वायरलेस कम्युनिकेशन लो पावर शॉर्ट रेंज wireless communication and uh, it's mainly used for uh, connecting the different home appliance devices and uh, the two most uh, used sensors are in this case are called zigbee sensors or threat sensors zigbee and threat so these are basically both of them are low power uh, interconnecting sensors now the 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 zigbee is the advanced version uh, because it is uh, based upon uh, internet protocol version 6 and it takes into consideration of a smartphone and quick reading code that is qr code by the way uh, the, uh, how does a quick reading code works i think you all might be, might have the idea a qr code works mm, by means of so let's uh, by mean so you have the different uh, dark and white spots distribution of uh, contrasts in a qr code so these distributions are then converted into binary format ones and zero and then they are further processed so this is how qr code works <laughs> Now uh, this QR code. So the thread technology takes into consideration the smartphone and the QR code. While as while at the Zigbee, the Zigbee one, it's more of uh, uh, getting a that is a sixteen bit in information and transferring it to the other cases. Now what are these uh, low power short range interconnecting uh, sensors? So For that, we need to uh, little dig deeper. Now, whenever uh, when you when you enter a home, you might have uh, several different types of uh, sensors. Like you might have a smoke detector, you might have a window or a door sensor which are open or not. You might have a humidity sensor, a temperature sensor, and etc. Now, if you need to have a connection between all these things. for example if there is a smoke detection you might like to have some changes in your home so that uh, any uh, sort of accidents can be avoided for that you need to have connection between uh, these types of sensors now uh, a, a simple basic uh, diagram uh, which actually tells about the function of these uh, zigbee so I mean, let's take the zigbee sensor is the zigbee uh, device has got a uh, Three different aspects. The first one is called a Zigbee end device. So it's I'm written writing it by this uh, by Zigbee. I'm writing it as Z end device. I mean the the final device, the devices which actually uh, are present. Then you have a Zigbee router. This is a Zigbee router, 
and then so it's Z router and lastly you have a Zigbee controller <coughs> so the the shape of or the, the connections it will look uh, as you have we will have uh, these end devices some of the end devices might be connect uh, they are connected to they will be connected to a router this is a router this router will again be connected to the controller and from the controller uh, there will be connection to other uh, routers uh, connection to other routers one router might be here and these routers again uh, are connected interconnected With them and lastly we have the end product uh, or the end devices in return term so this is how a zigbee uh, works uh, it has three different aspects and it works on the basis of a um, network or personal idea network like we have LAN uh, similarly to that we have PAN P A N Now, uh, we have uh, sensing uh, standards for IoT and Internet of Things as well. And you have uh, sensing, you need to, uh, there is a standard called Performance Index Standard. This is mainly for the MEMS uh, devices. And then you have a sensor for uh, edge sensing uh, standard. Then you have the green uh, sensor standards, which is mainly for smart buildings and energy management systems. Now, the another aspect of uh, this IE standards is the storage of data, how the data uh, get stored. So for that, uh, the very important uh, the one where the data are stored are called transducer electronic devices and they are digital files or data formats uh, they uh, provide the different type of informations like uh, this is this is the different type of informations like the manufacturer name model number serial etc uh, so this is uh, an example of a uh, uh, TDS TEDS for an accelerometer you can see the different uh, manufacturer name model version number and different uh, informations are provided now this uh, TEDS uh, is uh, is mainly associated with IEEE 1451 standards where a transduction transduction is taking place uh, so there is a whenever there is a transduction the common functionality of transduction is taken care by this standard the i451.2 this uh, is the interface of transducers integrating into the device and the last one is the mixed mode transducer that is mainly analog and digital now the why do we need this uh, teds because we need to have a plug and a play functionality uh, so the devices can self-identify and configure without malware interventions uh, we have uh, integration we need to uh, have integration we need to reduce the errors we need to uh, reduce the uh, burden of maintenance also and that is also the scope of enhanced automation okay now there are two ways by which these uh, uh, transducer electronic data are stored one is called the embedded memory where the transducer include non-volatile uh, memory 
and one of the uh, non volatile memories uh, is called EP ROM. The non volatile uh, yeah, EP ROM uh, and to store uh, TETS. Then uh, there is another type of memory called the external storage. Uh, where uh, this TETS can also be uh, stored in external database software systems. Okay, and this application again uh, similar to the IE standards, these data sheet are basically they are the storage systems of different types of data. So they have applications in uh, different aspects. All the aspects where sensing is important, like uh, industrial automation, healthcare, Internet of Things, and aerospace.